So there I was, sitting in the living room with my stepmom, while she watched the Hallmark Channel. And let me tell you, I was hooked to this movie. The script writing? Absolutely awful. It was clearly just another cash grab romance movie. But the plot? The plot was so outrageous. I just wanted to see how it unfolded. Welcome to the movie Merry-Go-Round, an absolutely captivating film by David Weaver, and of course, airing on the Hallmark Channel, as any romance does. Abby is an executive CEO who's moving to Paris with her fiancé in a few weeks. She got a huge job promotion, which she's so excited for at some random company, I guess. <laughs> as any good businesswoman wants to be a CEO of somewhere. As she's getting things ready for her move, her visa, packing her clothes, saying goodbye to friends, she goes to get her divorce papers from her first marriage. But what's this? Her divorce lawyer never submitted the documents, so they never got signed. Technically, she's still married to her first husband. Naturally, Abby wants to start her new life in Paris with her fiancé Edward. So she travels back to her hometown, goes to court, ready to sign those papers and move on with her life. She arrives at the court hearing, and as the judge is about to approve the divorce because Luke didn't show up, he barges in through the doors. The judge hands Abby the papers, and she signs them, and she hands them over to Luke. But he looks confused. He takes a moment to himself, and then he says, a divorce? I need time to think about this. Abby replies, Look, you've had years to think about this. Just sign the papers. I'm getting married in Paris soon, and I, I want to leave. Well, he refuses to sign. <laughs> the judge says that he can't force Luke to sign the papers. And since it's Friday, they can have the whole weekend to think it over, and they can come back on Monday for another hearing. You see, Abby and Luke got married when Abby was 18. And a month after they got married... Luke left a little note on his pillow saying that he was going to Alaska. And that's it. And then he left. You left, Luke. She's moved on. She's engaged. What's not clicking? Sign the papers, my guy. How many years has it been since he left for Alaska? They were about 40 years old when they filmed this movie. I'm just going to go based off of that information. So 40 minus 18. That's 22 years. He hasn't seen this lady for 22 years, and he's not going to sign the divorce papers? Wouldn't the marriage be just, like, annulled by then? I don't know anything about divorce, but surely leaving a month after you got married and then moving on with your lives, you wouldn't have to go to court and wait for him to sign divorce papers, right? Like, if he didn't want to divorce her because he wanted her money, I could get behind that. But he's still in love with her? You left a month after you guys got married. What kind of love is that? And you didn't reach out for 22 years? Let's say Facebook isn't a thing in this world. You're telling me that in this world there's not a single social media that he could have reached out on? Or, I don't know, went and visited the family and asked for some contact information? No, he waited 22 years for her to find out that they weren't actually divorced and have her come back to the hometown just to say, yo, I'm not signing these papers even though you're engaged and moved on and living your best life. What kind of crock of crap is that? But this is a Hallmark movie, so we kind of know that Luke and Abby might end up together, I guess. I'm really holding out and hoping that they won't. But I've seen how the movie ends. Abby, understandably annoyed, calls her fiancé Edward. Edward is so understanding and loving. He cracks some jokes about her still being married to her first husband. And then he encourages her to enjoy her time with her family. And that this weekend will just fly by. And then Monday will be here. They'll both sign the papers. And then they'll both move on with their lives. Abby decides to go and explore some carnival grounds. The same ones that Luke had proposed at and they had their first kiss at. Which he was really happy to point out when he saw her there. Abby gets flustered from him reminding her about that, and then she just goes back home to her family. We cut to Luke at his sister's bakery pie diner thing. 
and he's attempting to fix her broken dishwasher. But of course, he's struggling, and Abby comes in and sees him struggling with the dishwasher, and then just reaches her hand underneath it and flips a little switch, and then all of a sudden it's working again. I don't know that brand of dishwasher, but I don't think that would work. When my dishwasher stopped working, my partner had to remove the front of it, mess with some wires, and then slap the front back on. It's fixed now, which is fantastic, but there's no switch at the bottom to just fix it, you know? We had to straight up unscrew things, and that's messed up. So the fact that Abby could just reach her little hand underneath the little dishwasher and then just magically fix it? <sighs> Doubt it, Abby. What kind of witch are you? After fixing the dishwasher, you know Abby had some of Luke's sister's famous pie. As they were eating the pie and talking, two of Luke's potential customers walked up and said, Hey Luke, we know we hired you to paint our house, but we're going to go with someone else. And Luke was like, okay and then abby was like oh no 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 you guys signed a contract didn't you and they said oh my gosh we did and she's like well then luke is still painting your house and if not well we'll just have to take it to court and they're like oh oh my gosh you're right okay luke well you're still gonna work on our house so we'll see you later it was really weird <laughs> In another scene, after Abby's, like, biking around town, she goes to the pie shop again. They really love this pie shop. And they have some pie. The chef sets up a romantic candlelit dinner for them. They're flirting. And by they, I mean Luke's flirting while Abby looks a little bit uncomfortable. Then Abby gets up and goes home. She's got to process these new feelings. Now... You might be wondering why Luke left Abby after a month of being married and went to Alaska. Well, it's actually kind of a plot hole, but kind of funny, but also kind of really made me mad. So you see, Abby applied for the college in Princeton, and Abby's mom was going through the mail and saw the letter from Princeton. Being curious whether she got accepted or not, she opened the mail and saw that her daughter did get accepted. She was so excited, she resealed it up, put it back in the mailbox, and then she was thinking to herself, you know, Luke is an artist, and he's going to want to stay in his hometown. So the only way that Abby's going to go to Princeton, that by the way is in New Jersey, <laughs> is if her and Luke are no longer a thing. So Luke just leaves to Alaska, because he can go to Alaska. He can't go to New Jersey. Like, if he's an artist, and art can be done anywhere, and he chose to do his art in Alaska for the sake of Abby being able to go to Princeton and chase her dreams, surely he could have gone to New Jersey with her. I feel like it would be a little harder to get to Alaska than it would be to get to New Jersey. I'm pretty sure this whole thing is based in the States, so could have just drove to New Jersey, right? Clearly the mom didn't think that far. So she told Luke, you need to leave Abby because Abby needs to pursue her dream in Princeton. And if you're here, she won't go. So Luke leaves his little note, says, I've gone to Alaska to pursue my art. A goodbye. And Abby, of course is probably devastated. I don't know, they don't really talk about it, but I'm just going to assume she was devastated. She ended up seeing that she got accepted to Princeton and went to Princeton and then achieved her dream of being an executive CEO of somewhere <laughs> because that's what you go to Princeton for, to be an executive CEO. Can I just say that they emphasize that Luke is an artist a lot so I didn't really just pull out my butt that, oh, he paints houses, so he's an artist. Like, he's painted, like, paintings. They've showed, like, really good paintings that he's allegedly done. Or, er, er, allegedly. <laughs> that he's apparently done. I don't know about you guys, but as someone who also paints, not very well, if I'm being honest. But, because I painted that back there. I mean, you know, I'm good at abstract art. If you guys don't know this, Michael's, uh, the, like, craft store or whatever, shifts anywhere. And I bet you Hobby Lobby does. I bet you Amazon has some freaking paints. You can get paint in New Jersey, okay? 
<laughs> if you can get paint in Alaska, you can get paint in New Jersey. So I don't understand why he left Abby knowing that she was going to move to New Jersey when he could have, I don't know, gone with her. He could have told the mom, yo, um, actually, I'm going to go with my bae and because she's like my soulmate, blah, 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 whatever. But no, no. This man <laughs> waited 22 freaking years to... <laughs> <laughs> for Abby to find out that they're not divorced and then jump back on that train despite her being engaged to someone else. When I tell you that this made me so mad, I'm sorry, I'm getting all riled up. Let me just, let me get back to it, okay? <laughs> also, talk about developing abandonment issues. Luke really, really did that to Abby. So love that for her. And I'm so glad that she still likes him for some reason because if someone did that to me, I, I don't know, man. I would just be, I would be, I'd be furious. <laughs> okay. I would be furious. <laughs> so Abby talks to her mom and her mom tells her the truth. And for Abby, this changes everything. <gasps> She's absolutely shook it. You mean Luke didn't leave me by choice? He went to Alaska because of you, mom? And she's more mad at her mom than she is at Luke, which I can understand her being mad at her mom. But hold Luke accountable. God dang it, Abby. Abby gets on her little bike and bikes over to Luke's house. And he's outside staring at the stars. She told him that her mom finally told her the truth. And she wonders if Luke still thinks about her. And Luke, he says, every single night I think about you. Because I love you so much, etc, etc. Every night, Luke? Is that so? You thought about her every single night? For the past 22 years and you didn't bother to try to reach out the stepdad was so understanding of abby and so loving throughout the show you could have gone to him could have been like hey yo abby's daddy you know still got feelings for her i messed up i listened to the mom and i shouldn't have put me in touch with her you know i would assume she probably had the same phone number i mean they have phones right she calls edward and FaceTimes him and stuff. So they clearly had phones 22 years ago, right? Or maybe 20 years ago. Maybe 18 years ago. You, he had 22 years, okay? to For phones to become a thing. And to figure it out. But not once did he reach out to Abby. No. He waited until he found out that they were still married. And decided not to sign the divorce papers. And force her to have this weekend with him. So hopefully she falls back in love with him. That's not manipulative at all, Luke. That's, you know, that's love, isn't it, Hallmark? <laughs> that's love. Now, because of this information, and because Luke still loves her, Abby is so conflicted. I mean, it's been 20 plus years, and she's moved on. She has her dream job. She's engaged to this guy named Edward, and he's been nothing but supportive and loving, and every phone conversation that they have, he is so kind and sweet and understanding but she wants the scumbag i mean she wants luke the starving artist that can't really hold a job um clearly isn't making bank from his art and decided to abandon her 20 years ago yeah that makes sense okay okay i say this with all the love in my heart with all the kindness backed behind it, with all the caring that I care for this fictionalized character. How the heck you go to Princeton and you still dumb? That's what I want to know. How the heck you go to Princeton and you're still stupid? Executive CEO and you still make bad decisions? I don't think she deserves this promotion in Paris, to be honest. And, like, I'm offended for her job, okay? They have hired an absolute fool. How can you go... Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to get heated. <laughs> this movie made me so mad. And I think it's the ending that made me even madder, okay? So let's just get back into it. Luke is a walking red flag, as we know. Didn't talk to her for 20 plus years. Still a joik. Not making money. Listen to the mother-in-law for what? I don't know. Move to Alaska instead of moving to New Jersey with, with 
Abby. Okay. Fine. And he says that he thought about Abby for 20 plus years. Okay. Sure you did. Yep. I believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true, Luke, isn't it? You didn't make that up on the spot. I feel like you made it up on the spot. Mm -hmm. Again, never looks her up on Facebook, never reaches out for mutual friends, never does, like, anything to reach out to her, okay? Just frustrating. So they're doing this, like, little, like, dance thing for Luke's niece or whatever, and they're at the party, and Luke and Abby are flirting and dancing and whatnot, and Edward shows up. Edward showed up to her hometown unannounced. Oh! And Abby goes outside with him. And she explains the situation. She's like, Edward, I know we've been together for who knows how long. We didn't talk about it. But long enough to be engaged. And to be getting married in a couple weeks. But you see, this man, Luke, that left me 22 years ago. With a note on his pillow. Telling me that he was leaving for Alaska. You see, he still loves me. He did it for me, so I would go to Princeton. Because he couldn't go to New Jersey with me. Because he's an artist. And he had to do his art in Alaska. And Edward... They did my boy so dirty. He was understanding. He was kind. And he basically was like, Go get him, Tiger. Edward, no. Fight for your woman, Edward. You're the better person here, Edward. What are you doing? And then happily ever after, Abby and Luke stay married, and I guess she moves back to her hometown and gives up her job in Paris because they don't mention him going to Paris with her. That was just kind of a little drop at the beginning of the movie. So basically, woman finds out she's still married to her first love after not speaking for 20 years, and she leaves her loving fiancé, quits her dream job, and moves back to the hometown for a starving artist piece of crap. <laughs> I'm not crapping on him because he's a starving artist. I just want to make that clear. I'm crapping on him for all of his red flags of leaving her after a month because of mommy-in-law. Moving to Alaska instead of going to New Jersey. Because, what? Why couldn't he just go to New Jersey? Like, this has angered me so much. Why couldn't he just go to New Jersey with her and follow her for pursuing her dream? But no, she had to leave her dream to be with him because love conquers all. Moral of the story, Abby and Luke are both trash. Mainly Luke for just refusing to sign the divorce papers after 22 years. And Edward was done dirty. He deserved way better. You're wondering what my rating for this movie is? Oh, let me tell you. 10 out of 10 for an absolutely aggravating plot that made me want to, like, scream at the TV. <laughs> Love that. 4 out of 10 for the script writing. The only good parts of the script were really any time Edward spoke. I hated when Luke spoke. I hated when Abby spoke because they kept making wrong decisions. And Abby's stepdad loved him, too. Anytime he spoke and Edward spoke, that's the 4 out of 10. The rest of the six points that they lost out on is because of Abby and Luke. They could just get out of here. And 10 out of 10 for more plot holes than American Roads. So total score, who would not watch again? Absolutely ag aggravating. Hallmark, what are you doing, baby? Stop it. Stop it. I could write a better romance than this, okay? This, this was terrible, okay? David, stop. Just stop. Never write anything like this again. In fact, if you could write something where, I don't know, the man quits his job to be with the woman so she could pursue her dreams, I would love that. I would love that. Whose fantasy is it to quit their dream job, quit a really good man, for a mediocre loser like Luke? Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hated every second of watching this movie, but I loved every second of talking about it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I definitely got like super heated and I was trying not to really, 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 I was trying so hard not to. But this movie just, as Peter would say, grinds my gears, you know? Like, <sighs> have you seen this movie? 
it's on the Hallmark Channel, I guess. It's by Hall. Well, it was on the Hallmark Channel for like whatever TV sir. I don't know. I watch Peacock. I like reality TV shows. Not this bull crap of woman leaves man for love. Like that's lame. I want to see women thrive. I want to see men thrive. I want to see people thrive. Don't leave your dreams and life and whatever for a mediocre person. If you want to quit your dreams for someone, you best believe if that's the right person, they will tell you, hey, don't quit your dreams. Let me support you. Let's work together. We can still be together while you still pursue your dreams. As it should be. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you when I see you again. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> By the way, I have a Patreon. I posted a Seeking, Seeking Brother Husband on there. I did like a little recap. Um, so you can watch that if you would like to, or you could check out many of my other videos here on my YouTube channel. I'm getting really into video essays. I am on, like, this is honestly so exciting for me. Like, I've found a passion again in script writing and just filming. Um, so yeah, and I'm working on a couple really cool things. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's Real Housewives related. And I'm going to be posting like a couple little videos and I'm working on this really huge mega video that I really want to be done by this year. Um, but there's 18 seasons of Housewives of Orange County and I got to get through them all. So wish me luck and then I'll catch you later. Bye. An absolutely captivating film by Davy Davy. <laughs> As she getting... As blah, 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 with the fullest extent of the law, <laughs> with the fullest, with the fullest extent of the law, it can't be that, right? We'll come at you. We'll come at you with the fullest extent of the law. For the fullest extent of the law. Ah, uh, that doesn't sound right. I need my nose squirter. <laughs> I can't handle the sniffle. There, yes. It's that good, good, that freaking, that freaking afrin. No, no, no. You're not supposed to snuck. Snuck. You're not supposed to suck this, apparently. You're just supposed to squirt and then tilt your head back. But ain't nobody got time for that, okay? I did a squirt. I'm moving on. <laughs> Achieved her gym. A gym. <laughs> Achieved that's not manipulative at all manipulative manipulative that's n 10 out of 10 for more plot holes than illinois roads it roads roads okay if you find yourself someone where they're like yo <laughs> i would love to join you to your college <laughs> and support you in your dreams but instead i'm gonna move to alaska dump that man or woman or person. Dump them. Just dump them. They're done. They're done. They're done. You deserve better. They're done. Anyway.